my, my name is uh, Bart Boerhaven. I'm uh, the head of Belhop, that's our hop farm. We are located in Poperingen in uh, Flanders, Belgium, not that far away from the French border. And recently I have been chosen as chairman of the Belgian hop growers. So um, the Belgian hop growers are now with, I think, in Popering with 18, and in total we are maybe with uh, 30 uh, all over uh, Belgium. Um, we have had some difficult years, but nowadays we have got some young hop farmers who are uh, dynamic, who are willing to invest. Uh, maybe we are the smallest hop, hop growing country in the world, but we have uh, managed to have good and uh, sure quality of hops. So uh, that's a reason to, to believe in our uh, in our hop sector. Uh, we, we go for it, even though we are small. Uh, what are some of the difficulties you're facing? As you know, you mentioned it's the quality is what makes you guys stand out. You know, you yeah. have uh, mm -hmm. the big suppliers from the U.S. Uh, having a distribution center here. Yeah. You have competition, uh, so you say quality makes your th your association and the hop farmers here. Yeah. What are you dealing with right now? And as a lobby groups, what what yeah. do you do about it? For we are dealing with one of the the most important things is uh, climate change. You can see it. You see some varieties doing well, other not. You see old varieties like old English varieties. We have got the same climate as in England, uh, in, in Belgium. We see those varieties have, have difficulties with uh, long periods of drought or long wet periods. Uh, we can see also uh, some kinds of diseases uh, like mildew, like verticillium. Uh, so it's necessary to search or, or to, to try to search new varieties who are uh, climate resilient or uh, they, they, who can cope better with diseases. So we started up with some uh, Belgian growers, uh, some kind of breeding program together with uh, research to search for new Belgian varieties who are growing well. So we have looked which varieties are doing well, like we have got uh, Belgian Cascade that's doing well, Magnum is doing well. So uh, we are trying to uh, cross them with, with some male plants and then look for, for uh, varieties with another flavor because that's also an important thing. It's not just climate resilient and uh, to have good quality or uh, to have a, a kind of variety who is uh, less susceptible to, to diseases. But brewers must want it. Thus, so uh, the hop must have as well a good alpha for, um, uh, percentage or uh, must have a lot of uh, oil or uh, whatever a brewer wants. So it's a uh, it's like uh, searching a needle in a haystack. But we, we try to do it and that shows how dynamic you, we are. Um, so we, we, we try to invest in the future. Another thing is uh, looking for irrigation. Because uh, we see countries or fields that are irrigated uh, with, with uh, water in the hop fields, uh, they, they are more sure about their yields. So uh, now we are going to test this year in some hop fields with irrigation, with fertigation. Look how uh, it affects the yields, how it lowers the temperature in the hop fields. Um, look if the, the parameters of the hops stay the same. Maybe if you irrigate your alpha or your oil, oil content is lower, who knows? So those are all things we have to investigate, but it's something we, we would like to do in the, the next years. And it's so uh, refreshing, you know, I was... Uh so refreshing to hear you talk about things like climate change. Is that a, the injection of new talent, new people? I mean, what's your background and what, you know, people always talk about the aging mm -hmm. farmer base and I guess that's happened in the hop sector as well, or maybe not. Uh, and you mentioned younger yeah. People becoming interested. What? What? Where is the interest and why? And uh, bringing this new thoughts on climate change, which I would, you know, we're... aging is still busy in uh, our hop sector. So you still uh, see more and more uh, hop growers who are uh, having a, a certain age and who are willing to stop. And the advantage 
in our country, yes, we have good soil and a good climate, so we can grow everything we want. We can grow uh, uh, vegetables, we can grow potatoes, we can grow whatever we want. So there's a big uh, concurrency between hops and other uh, vegetables or uh, arable uh, uh, things you can grow. Uh, why choose for hops? Because it's a, a nice uh, cultivation, it's, it's a nice product to work with, it's a nice story. People he like to hear it. And I think you can be more proud of being a hop farmer than being a potato farmer. Not that... I, I didn't say potato farmers are, are, are less good, but hop farmers have a story. And that story is not only the hops, it's also uh, the beer. It's, it's uh, the, whole, the whole thing you, you, you tell people and people like stories. So that's one of the reasons why, why young people still stay interested in, 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 uh, in the hop sector. But it's not easy uh, to, to stay with some young people, but we are with a, a 10 hop growers who are, uh, don't say that young, but still young. So with those 10, we, we, we chose to be positive, to, we chose to be dynamic and to go for uh, uh, the future and uh, look if we can do things, if we can look for climate, if we can grow other varieties uh, and especially uh, one, of, one of the things that is interesting as well is uh, try to uh, convince Belgian brewers to use our Belgian hops. Because uh, we are the smallest country in growing hops, where we are the biggest country in brewing beer. It's a contradiction. So we should work more and more together, and it is working more and more together. Because we see more and more brewers are interested in a lot sustainability. Of the brewers, for example. Yes, in sustainability, uh, yeah. less food miles, uh, working together one to one with a hop grower. And uh, then they can come with their clients to visit our company, and they are, they are happy to visit us. And that's also a reason to invest in the future. So uh, a lot of my younger colleagues and, and our farm as well has invested in the last years in a new shed, new uh, uh, hop kilns, uh, new machinery to, to save energy and to uh, deliver uh, hops that are uh, transparent in quality and uh, that have high standards. And origin. Yeah. yeah. As well, uh, so we, 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 we make sure it's a really Belgian origin. We look as well to organic growers. Most of us are not organic growing, but we use organic techniques in our growing process. So uh, we try to work as sustainable as possible, but everything has its price. So it's always important to, to, uh, to, to be well paid as well. Uh, you, you can invest in, in, in and climate and uh, environment and everything, but you should be rewarded for it. So it's uh, always uh, a mix or a, a cooperation between the breweries, your clients, and us as hop farmers. But I think if we search um, a road in between, it should work out. And it's such an important part of uh, Belgian beer culture. Yeah. Uh, and to have your own indigenous hop farm. We've seen Hof ten Dormal, uh, some breweries try that cyclical, what you call sustainable outlook. And it's important uh, that you and yep. your, the other farmers survive as part of that culture. It's important because uh, uh, Belgian beer culture has been um, I said rewarded as UNESCO yes, World UNESCO, Heritage. Yes. It would be a damage if hop culture isn't part as well of that uh, Belgian beer culture because it's it's in inherent. Uh, Belgian uh, hops has always been in, 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 in Belgium. Uh, once it was uh, one of the, the, the biggest uh, hop growing um, regions in, in, in Europe, maybe in the world. Um, and we, we should be proud on it. Uh, we have, we have the, the skills to grow it. Uh, we can cultivate almost every variety of the whole world in Belgium. It's possible because we have the climate, we have the soil. So we use English varieties, we use German varieties, Czech varieties, even American varieties. And they all grow well in, a, in, a, in, a, in our country because we are so close to the sea. It's a mild climate, not too hot, not too, not too cold, not too wet. It's a mix of everything, so we still should believe in our hops and I hope our brewers do the same. Well, I'll contest the not too wet bit. 
Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> now with this is too late. <laughs> Great. And just as a last question, what's your background? And uh, uh, did you get into this right from the start? Or? I'm, the fi I'm a fifth generation hop grower, but I didn't start in a hop farm. So my dad was still hop growing. growing. And I uh, studied at university and at high school, I, uh, and I went working abroad. And all of a sudden, uh, I had the idea. I saw my father uh, coming older and older, and uh, all of a sudden, he he, he stopped uh, growing one of his hop fields. And that was for me the idea. Okay, now I have to jump and try to swim, or it will stop completely. And I I, I, I couldn't bear the idea uh, that the, the hops would disappear at our farm. So I decided to get up with my wife, we will jump for it, and I'm uh, still happy that I had done it. And how long ago was that? That's uh, 2017. Okay. Well, well done. Nice talking to the you. period it's Bart. Thank always, you for taking welcome. your time. That Thank was you. a really interesting insight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.